All right, here we are in the session. This song is called Celebrate This Love. Uh, it's by RH Students. Uh, they're a group of high school students that go to Rolling Hills Community Church, and uh, they did a three-song EP last year, 2015. They played everything on this album. I think they did a really good job, and they wrote all the songs. So I got to produce it with them. It was really fun. I think they did great. So uh, let's take a listen to the song, just a little section of it in context, then we'll dive in and see where sidechain compression is being used. All right, here's whole song in context. Love has pierced through the darkness. Okay, so that's just a little bit of it. Sidechain compression. How do we do it? First thing you got to do is you need something to compress. So in this case, we've got a synth and a bass. They're both coming from Omnisphere. Omnisphere is an amazing uh, plug-in virtual instrument. I've got it set up in multi-out mode. And we could do another tutorial on how that works, but there's a lot of them already out there that are really helpful. But a short answer of that is in multi-mode. You can have up to eight sounds coming out of one instance of Omnisphere. I've got seven set up. All right, so... I've got a, so here's the synth, here's the bass, they're coming out of Omnisphere. I have an instrument track set up here and an instrument track set up here. The reason that matters is that whatever you're using to compress, you need it to be a type of channel in your digital audio workstation that can process audio, not just MIDI. So if you if you just have a MIDI track here, sidechain compression is not going to work. It has to work on a, on a channel that processes audio on the way in and on the way out. An instrument track can do that for me. So I did that. But if you had an audio channel and you just recorded an external synth, like say you brought in a Moog or something, you plugged it in and recorded the bass line and you had audio waveforms like you do here, you could do sidechain compression on a track like that. So after you have your track set up that you want sidechain compression on, then you need a compressor. So in this case, I used Waves H Comp, which H stands for hybrid. We'll talk more about why that is in a second. So you plug in your compressor. I have it on the first insert slot. I don't think that matters, but that's how I did it. Next thing you need to do so that this acts as a sidechain compressor and not just a regular compressor is you need to change the input of the compressor. When a compressor is set to begin with, a standard way is to see it with no key input. When there's no key input, that means that it is going to be listening for the sound coming off of this channel and compressing it. It uses the sound itself as the input to compress, to tell the compressor, hey, time to compress. In fact, if I play this section, uh, let's watch the gain reduction needle uh, and meter and see what it, how it acts. All right. So the meter just immediately goes down to just about minus six, minus seven, and it floats there a little bit because it is taking the audio from that synth and using that as the input to tell the compressor, time to compress this thing, time to turn it down. And so that normally compressors are used by and large to control dynamically whatever you have the compressor on. Maybe you want less dynamics, and so you're going to uh, have a compressor. Think of it as like a, uh, a little... Uh, engineer that's turning the volume up and down really fast uh, based on some parameters that you set. But as soon as I change the key input to sidechain, watch how this meter behaves differently. All right, now it's bouncing and it's bouncing in time with the beat. Why? Because it is no longer listening for the sound of the synth to be the trigger to say time to compress. It's listening to something else. What is it listening to? It's listening to whatever is being sent down this sidechain bus. All right, so what is being sent down that sidechain bus? This here drum machine, all right? So we have a drum machine track, it's MIDI information, but it's, an, it's on an instrument track. It's coming out of battery here. So we just did a, a programmed a very basic drum beat kick is really dominant in it. There's like a little clap and maybe a basic, I think there's a little bit of a snare in there too. The tambourine's not neither here nor there for this thing. All right, so that was the 
that is the source information that is telling this compressor to compress. All right, so if we, we have the solid up, but there, you can see it and hear it. Every time that kick hits, basically on the quarters, there goes the needle. How do we do that? Well, we've got the key input right here. So the way you do that is you take your signal. So here's my drum machine channel. And on, on the sends section, I'm going to go over to the track view so it's a little easier to see this. Here's our drum machine track. Here's our inserts, A through E, F through J. Now here's our sends, right? Sends are where you want to send information, audio information from somewhere to somewhere else. You always need a bus for that, all right? Um, so here it is. I set up a bus. I set up a send that's using a bus, and it's the sidechain bus. I don't have a sidechain bus in my Pro Tools or my DAW rig. What's the deal? Here's how you make one. You have to make one. So you go to Setup. You go to I.O. You go to your bus menu. And you say New Path, One Mono Bus. Make it mono if you're going to do sidechain compression. Hit Create. And then down at the bottom, it's going to have a generic name. Bus One. Double click it. Name it something that makes sense. Uh, like sidechain. Now I already did that right there so we're just gonna cancel out of this but that's how you do it once you do that hit return hit ok now you've got a sidechain bus that you can send audio information from somewhere to somewhere that's all a bus does so now if we're doing this let's click on this there you can see your fader when I bring this down meter stops bouncing because audio is not coming from the sidechain bus into the compressor anymore Turn it back up, boom, there it goes. I'm sending the audio from the sidechain output here, the sidechain send, into this H comp key input, and it starts compressing the synth using the beat coming from this. That's sidechain compression. And you can see it just starts creating this pumping thing where the synth is getting reduced and then it's recovering to the beat of the music. Now, why did I use H comp? You can use just about any compressor. Here's why I used H comp for this, uh, because it was fun. Uh, H for hybrid means it's got some digital modern features combined with some old school analog vibey sound. So first thing that's unique to H comp, at least unique that I know of, uh, is that it's the only one that I know of that has a feature where the release time can be synced to the host tempo. All right, so when you click this, it knows that the host tempo of Pro Tools is of this session is 114. And uh, so it automatically calibrates the release time to be in time with the music. Normally, in a typical compressor, it's based on milliseconds. And you've got a knob, and you just sort of dial it in. So you listen. Right. If you go too slow... It doesn't have time to recover before the compressor hits again. You gotta speed it back up. Now that could work, that's fine, but this just sort of made it easy for me to set it and forget it. Also, in this song, the chorus is at 113 BPM and the verses, everything else is at 114. Not a huge change, but if you imagine if you were at a session where you wanted something to sync the tempo and the tempo changed, you don't have to automate it. It just follows it with you. So that was a really cool feature. The other one, a lot of compressors have this now, is a mix knob. You can um, So you can send some of this through. Basically, it creates a parallel compression uh, scenario right inside of your compressor. So you don't have to have it uh, all the way compressed. Uh, you can set it 50-50. So here's what it sounds like. So I had it about 50-50. There's all the way, it's getting just destroyed. And there's dry, no compression at all. It just very easily allowed me to dial in something that felt right to me, right about there. Last thing in the H comp that's cool is this little analog knob. If you go to off, it bypasses all this kind of coloring information and it just gives you a nice, basic, uh, digital, clean EQ, or not EQ, compressor, sorry. But 
Waves went and modeled the color and character information from a, a few other uh, classic hardware compressors. I don't think they tell you which ones are which. Um, I don't think it really matters either. You just uh, use your ears and decide which one you like. I ended up landing on uh, Model 3 for the synth. It cr it's a little. It rolls off a little bit of the high end, and the mid range is a little uh, kind of spitty, a little gritty. And I kind of like that. You can really hear it in the recovery when it when uh, the synth is recovering back from compression. It just kind of has a little more grit to it. Here's off. And here's on. You hear that kind of zzz in the recovery, that, and I liked that. Four... It, Adds a little bit of high end, and a lot of high end hiss actually. Two does a little bit of the same as four, but it's just a little different. And then anyway, they each of them added a subtle difference, and I landed on this one. I liked it. So it just gives you something else to play with so that you're. Uh, sidechain compression is more than just the utility of creating pumping but you're actually it gives you another place to add color and vibe to what you're doing so that was it on the synth channel here it is on the bass channel let's solo that up just so you can hear that this is a killer bass in Omnisphere I'm really happy with it I ended up using model number four on this one and a little more compressed on this a little more Take it out. Bring it back in. I think I like that better. I probably should have used more compression. Oh well. <laughs> Mix is out there. So that's where I did it. That's how it works. Uh, side chaining is fun. Don't be afraid of it. And uh, again, this isn't anything revolutionary, but it's just kind of how I ended up using it and how the Waves, H Comp, and Omnisphere uh, added some kind of fun elements to something that people use a lot of. Uh, a lot. Uh, let's listen to the end effect. Um, when everything's going, you can also hear that it really does help clean up and open up a mix. So what I'll do, open up this fader. This is again the sidechain send fader. If I mute this, it means no more sidechain compression. So what I'll do is uh, we'll have com sidechain compression in, out, in, out. I'll toggle it as we play through this chorus. You can hear how it opens up the mix. It creates a lot more bounce, a lot more fun. Nothing could separate us from your love Your freedom will overtake us You are enough And so we will celebrate this love uh, Let's listen one more place The very end, this outro You can definitely tell how much it opens up the mix a little bit You can hear the kicks more you hear uh, the lead guitar more. Here we go. At the end, when that synth pad is super bright and super loud, uh, the sidechain compression really helps keep it from just blowing everything else away as soon as i take that off it's like you can't you can't really di distinguish the melody and some of the other stuff going on so sidechain compression it's fun it really works give it a shot thanks <laughs>